Hello, I've got for you today the 2022 release, July release for uh, Mont Blanc. This is the 18, 1812 limited edition, writer's edition dedicated to the Brothers Grimm. So this is uh, a slightly more developed version of the 9800 you may have already seen. Uh, and as usual, these pens come in a simulated book case, book and book case, uh, and these limited editions also come with a, uh, the, a supplementary uh, little pamphlet that uh, usually contains uh, an anecdote or some information from the, the author's lives. So this pen is dedicated to both Brothers Grib, uh, Jakob and Wilhelm, uh, and you see that, I think both names are there, yeah. In this little supplementary, supplementary booklet, you have uh, an excerpt from their work uh, towards mapping the German language. So they were, uh, of course, very much uh, well known for their fairy tales, but they were academics, they were scholars, and had the ambition of mapping the German language. They got up to, to F, and then in here they've got uh, simply a little little copy of their work. Well penned, easy enough to read, uh, but of course in German. Not dated though, not dated, no. But page numbers, wow, they got to 3,267 pages. Uh, I think the the work to map or uh, to complete their dictionary ended in the 1960s, so it took well over 200, 250 years to to complete this little sticker. Tenacious. No. Okay. So that's the supplementary booklet, a nice little embellishment with these limited edition pens, and then the the actual pen comes in this simulated leather bound book with a, as usual, an informational booklet. This informational booklet is only in English and Chinese, and you can see that they've cut costs by shifting to matte paper rather than the gloss, glossy paper. Granted, I'd prefer that they uh, cut corners here rather than the actual pen itself. However, I think, the, sadly, they've, they've gone down a road of uh, cutting costs in unfortunate areas. That's made the, the quality of the pen suffer, I think. So uh, this pen, if you see it in store, or if you get to see one of the uh, models that is uh, not a production model, but uh, sort of the, the, the store illustration model, that's not numbered, so there'll be uh, four zeros or triple zeros rather than a date, an actual number. They are quite yellow gold, right? So the, this this overlay, so it is skeletonized, this overlay is yellow gold in in the display models. But the actual production models are not quite as uh, as covered with gold. So I'm not gonna unwrap it because it gives me the feeling that the gold has worn off. That's the, the sense I get. It's very lightly applied. Uh, and you can see, I think, here on the edges uh, where the gold hasn't been applied, it just looks uh, silvery. It looks, uh, I think, a bit too too worn down to be uh, to be really really nice. And I think before I get into the symbolism of the pen, the the main gripe I have with Mont Blanc at, the, at this point is that they've sort of used technologies in this level of pen. Uh, where they've been able to achieve very nice, very fine detail here on the, the overlay. Uh, very neat. I love looking at this overlay. It's designed to resemble or mimic antique gold, but of course it's, I'm pretty sure, brass coated with, uh, with uh, various layers of metal. Uh, but this, this beautiful effect, this beautiful relief, They've not carried it forward on the the triple eight on the the higher edition versions of the the writer's edition or the 
the patron of arts. So the yeah, I'm just ranting at this point, but the the uh, Queen Victoria pen had the potential to have this beautiful relief. Instead, they have thistles that are just uh, two 2D drawings, which is very disappointing. I wish they had used this technology on their Patron of Arts and on their higher edition pens, because there they've got uh, solid gold skeletonized, and it's a lot nicer than simply just an etched etched design. Okay, well, that's that's enough of that. So this pen is like exactly like the the 9800 version of this pen designed to resemble a walking stick with a bulbous bulbous finial, a clip that is designed to uh, resemble a root, which references their uh, tireless efforts to study German literature. And here they've got at the base of the, the clip uh, reference to their activism, surprisingly. They were not quite uh, as popular in the universities because of, well, opinions they held, and they, I think they were expelled along with seven of their colleagues from one of the German universities, and that uh, there's seven reference to that. Under it, they've got the years 1838, I think, and, eight, and 1971, which, like the the other version of this pen references the, the time it took to translate their work into English, or possibly the time it took to finish their uh, dictionary, the German dictionary. So there you've got the signature of the first brother, uh, and then the Wilhelm here on the other side. Nice subtle inscription uh, on the cap. The finial is adorned with Mother of Pearl emblem, co uh, surrounded by red resin. The red resin is designed to reference Snow White. And on the bottom, I just noticed this, there's a little red uh, dot on the bottom of the cone. This is supposed to resemble apparently a spindle from Rumpelstiltskin. I'm not quite sure what the symbolism is for this particular red dot, but nice little accent. So the overall uh, aesthetic here is obviously leaves, branches, and rose thorns taken from Snow White, I think. And also the, the, there's a D here that is in reference also to Snow White, uh, the, the German word for Snow White so it begins with D. Uh, not gonna attempt to pronounce it, but there you go. That's the, the justification or the, the reference behind the D. Uh, on the cone, pretty sure the, the fittings are platinum coated uh, and the barrel, the underlay is ruthium. On the cone we've got uh, another inscription uh, with 1812, oops, where are we? 1812, which is the year in which the, the main the, the works that they're most known for were published as a compendium of stories, 12 stories. Uh, there you go. So, I think the, like, I'm not going to open it because I, I feel like the, I don't know, it, it feels like the pen's already worn down because of that attempt to make an antiqued sort of patina, I guess, on the surface, makes it feel like it's already worn down, which isn't really great for a pen that has quite a lot of other elements that could be considered quite modern. Uh, but yeah, another, another issue I've noticed is with this pen and another production version of this pen, the casting, uh, the casting lines on the bottom here aren't entirely removed. So where the, the, uh, the branches meet, you could often see the, the, the seams of the casting are still there in little tiny, uh, little tiny specks. So over the years, yeah, they've, I think they've let themselves go. This is, this is not a cheap pen, uh, limited edition pen. There, maybe you can see that little white speck there, somewhere there is the, the, I would, I would call it neglect to, to finish the, the overlay before applying it or before inserting the, the core of the pen. So a bit disappointing there, fit and finish, not 100% 
but overall a nice pen. I like the aesthetic of the pen uh, and I want to encourage them to do more of this type of relief where they've got not just engravings but uh, more casting or embossing that is more organic especially if they are trying to evoke themes, natural themes. It's very odd to have a uh, an etch of a bumblebee when you can just as easily emboss it and have a bit more relief to it. So there you have it. The 2022 Writer's Edition dedicated to the Brothers Grimm and a lot of a lot of personal opinion and critiques of the the way in which they've been taking their practices. So let me know if you've got questions and I hope you enjoyed that.